Hey everybody, welcome back to this introductory series on NestBlox. I'm Cliff Anderson, a librarian at Vanderbilt University and a member of our Computational Thinking and Learning Initiative. In our last video, we learned to draw simple shapes on the stage. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a circle. What makes creating a circle that different from a square? Stick around to find out. <laughs> Our goal today is to ask our turtle to draw a circle on the stage. What's the most straightforward way to draw a circle? Well, we could move a step, turn a degree, then move another step, turn a degree, and so on and so on until we reach 360 degrees. So what blocks do we need to carry out that method? Let's go take a look. All right, so I'm gonna bring over here from the motion palette over here, I'm going to grab, let's see, turn. That'll help us to turn a degree. And this is going to help us move. So I'll snap that together. So we want to say turn one degree. And then we want to move one step. And as you remember from last time, we'll take our pen here. We're going to say pen down. So we'll do that. And pen up. Okay, that's great. Let's take over, oh, our sprite has disappeared. If this ever happens, right click on this and just click show. There's the sprite, let's bring it down to the middle. Okay, so pin down, turn one degree, move one step, pin up. We'll click on this. We should be able to see, if you look carefully right here, a single dot. So all we have to do is make 360 of those dots and we'll be done, right? So we could do what we did last time and just replicate these blocks. We could right click on this here and say duplicate and we could duplicate that 360 times. But as I guess you could imagine, that would be a pretty dull way to make a program. We'd end up with like a huge stack of blocks on the screen that would actually go off the bottom. So we're not gonna do it that way. Fortunately, there is another way to do this. And programmers have developed an acronym for avoiding that kind of repetition where you just copy blocks over and over again. It's called the DRY principle or the do not repeat yourself principle. The DRY principle basically says that you should find a way of reducing repetition whenever possible in your program. If you discover yourself duplicating a set of blocks over and over again, then you should try another solution. In this case, what we need is a control block. So the set of control blocks are colored yellow in Nets blocks. Let's take a look over here. Let's go up and you can see, I guess that's yellow. Maybe like a kind of yellowish brown. In any case, those are the control blocks. So these control blocks affect what we call flow of control in our program. The idea is pretty simple. Think about reading a book. If you read a book in English, the text reads from left to right across the page. But if you're reading manga, then you need to read from right to left. In Chinese, you may find books laid out in various formats, from left to right across the page, or perhaps in columns from top to bottom, and then from right to left. And if you try to read a page in a way differently than the publisher intended, the individual words on the page will not make sense. A similar idea applies to programming languages. In NetsBlox, you need to read programs from top to bottom. So we start at the top of the set of blocks, and then we work our way down the stack. But we can use control structures to alter that straightforward flow. For example, if we want to repeat a set of blocks over and over again, then we can use a repeat block to repeat the set of blocks inside of that block a certain number of times before moving on to the blocks below it. So if we look over here and we grab, for example, this repeat block, and you see it has a number there, it also has this slot. This is a slot that we can put other blocks into. So I can take these two blocks and put them in here. And you see that it sort of snaps around it. This particular type of control block is called a C-shaped block. And that's because it kind of looks like a C that you can put things into. 
let's give it a shot. Let's use the 3P block and we're going to draw our circle without having to repeat these blocks 360 times. Okay, so I'm going to take this block here and I'm going to type in 360 as the number of times I want to repeat. I'm going to put the pen down before I get started and then I'll take the pen up. And just to show that there's no magic behind the scenes, let's get a clear block here. So it starts fresh and let's give it a try. All right, here we go. We can see a nice circle coming to existence. And it stops when it completes the loop. There you go. That's what we call a control block that makes it possible for us to do complicated calculations or computations without actually having to develop a huge stack of blocks. We actually did it in just a few. So this is one way to draw a circle, but there is a certain downside to this particular technique. You see that the circle is off center. It's not really in the center. It started at the center and then it kind of looped below and then it comes back up to the top. So if we're going to use this technique, we're going to have to do some interesting calculations to figure out where we are going to put the center whenever we run this set of blocks. It might be easier to actually just start the calculation at the center and then we can say here's where we want the circle to be and we can also define the radius. Let's try a different technique. I'm going to take these blocks and just throw them off to the side and then I'm going to start again with let's just take the pin down and pin up. We know we need those and the clear. We're going to go to control and I'm going to grab from here. Let's take a look. This repeat 10. So that's the same as the last time. But what we're going to do this time in motion, we're going to use that go to 0, 0. This is going to define where the particular circle starts. That'll be the center of the circle. And then this will help us define the radius, move 10 steps. In this case, just to make it a little bit bigger, I'm going to say 50 steps. And then we're going to turn a degree right here. Now, in order for this to work, well, let's, let's try it this way first and I'll talk it through. So I'll put the pin down here, the pin up there. Let's put the clear on top to make sure everything is cleared and let's give it a shot. Oop, that's not quite what we expected. Why is that? I forgot to change the 10 to 360. Let's do that. All right, again. So that's making a nice circle, but the difference here is that circles filled in and that may be an effect that you want. But if you just want to draw the same lines, we're going to have to do a little bit of extra work. Now think about this. Every time that this runs, it goes to 0, 0, and then it moves 10, or in this case, I think we set it to 50, 50 steps from that direction that is pointing, and that's going to make the circumference of the circle. And then we turn one degree, and then it makes that same route again and again and again until it makes it 360 times, which is why the lines are filling the interior of the circle. If we wanted to just simply sketch out the circumference, then we're going to have to take the pen and do a little bit more work here. So let's say we still want it to be 50 steps. So we're going to take 49. We're going to grab this over here again and pull in, move 10 steps. Then we're going to take the pen down and the pen up and put it on one side or the other of this last piece. I'm just going to change it to one. So now we've got move 49 steps, but you see we also here have move one step. And so when I put this back in, right there, let's get it clear. Let's try it out. You see it makes that trip up without tracing its steps until that very last step in which case then it marks it on the screen. So that actually now is just marking out the circumference. So it's very similar to the way that we did it before, but the difference is we can easily change the starting place by just changing our X and Y values. So here, let's start at 50 and you see it moves over there. And we can also, of course, change the radius of the circle by simply changing this number in here. So now we're gonna move 90 steps or we'll try 89 to keep it an even number. Well, not that big. There we go. Should we try it? Oh, I think I still have it too big. Let's try that again. 89. There we go. And uh, we need to show, bring it back. Should actually go back to the center anyway. There we go. So a slightly bigger circle. Using this technique, we can move the circle around the screen 
selecting the center and the radius with greater ease. If we want to make this set of blocks fancier, we can also add another control block. This is called a hat block. Let's point it out right here. So I'm going to go to control and these are the hat blocks. They kind of look like a hat if you use your imagination. So I'm going to bring this one over here. It says when green flag clicked. And you'll note here that by putting that on top, because it's sitting on the top of the other blocks, I can kick off the sequence simply by clicking on this green flag here. So I don't have to click on the set of blocks itself. There you go. That's a more elegant way to starting a computation or a program. And sometimes you actually need it because you may have multiple sets of blocks and it's not clear to the user or even to yourself which set of blocks starts first. So you use the green flag as click block to identify the point of entry into your program. To return to our literary metaphor, these hat blocks signal start reading on this page and then go from there. Okay, we've covered a number of concepts and techniques in this video. We learned how to draw a circle in two different ways. We gained insight into the DRY principle, and I introduced the concept of flow of control and control structures along with two kinds of control blocks, C-shaped blocks and hat blocks. So that's enough for a single video. In our next video, we'll put these techniques to use by writing a program to create a pointillist painting a la Georges Seurat. So look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining me.